Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, excellent to see you and uh, happy to be here. Um, there are, I mean, uh, if you look at the big picture, there are two major shifts that we need to successfully go through. One is the decoupling of uh, emissions from economic growth. Uh, and the other is a successful transformation from a linear economy to a circular economy where the objective is zero waste. Uh, and the way we see it, um, the financial markets are um, significant uh, enablers in both key processes. Um, if you look at it, um, we have seen in the last five years uh, uh, a fundamental change in uh, financial, uh, in the channeling of financial resources. This is an example of debt. Uh, and as you see, the level of sustainable debt has increased by 10 times in the last five years. Uh, and it's a one way road. Uh, it will be more and not less. If you add to this the investment capacity and the level of uh, uh, asset managers uh, that is implemented, uh, implementing uh, responsible investing criteria, uh, around 80 tri trillion do uh, dollars worth of assets under management are now signatories to United Nations uh, principles for responsible in investing. So I, I would say that sustainability is the key driver uh, in the financial markets right uh, now. Uh, there are three major uh, drivers behind this development. One uh, is the understanding in the financial markets of climate risk. Climate risk uh, and the relationship to performance, climate risk and the relationship to financial risk. Uh, the, we, we have known this for a while, uh, but the new thing is that we are developing an understanding and we are developing knowledge that is implemented uh, in investment processes, in investment strategies and in the modeling. So our understanding, collective understanding of climate risk is a key driver. The other has to do with uh, customer preferences both consumer preferences, but also, as we have just uh, the demonstrated, the business-to-business -business sector, uh, the value chains, uh, the uh, sustainability criterions that businesses are implementing in their own uh, core activities is a key driver. Uh, on top of that, uh, of course, public procurement, which is a very important driver in Norway and in countries around the world. Uh, the third driver, which I will dig a little deeper into, is regulatory change. Uh, uh, I guess EU is not uh, no longer, or Europe is no longer a military might, no longer uh, the leading economic power on the planet, but EU has taken the position uh, to develop an ID leadership when it comes to the green transformation. And it's powerful, uh, it's important, uh, and it has a lot of impact. Uh, the taxonomy is a part of the uh, sustainable finance platform. The sustainable finance platform is one of the key pillars um, in uh, uh, the European Green Deal. Uh, the taxonomy, what it really is, is um, a definition of what is a sustainable activity and what is not a sustainable activity. Uh, which is in itself is helpful uh, because consumers and businesses and all other activities need to have these kind of uh, uh, definitions. Uh, and it becomes even more important uh, when it's implemented in EU hard law uh, starting off the beginning of uh, January already next year, in a couple of months. And it will also uh, drive uh, financial regulation. Uh, the capital requirement for banks, um, the risk levels for uh, investors. So the EU taxonomy, uh, it's, it's uncertain uh, still uh, what kind of impact this will have. Um, it's a discussion. Uh, and you know, it's defined based on research uh, and in-depth knowledge 
but it's decided based on political processes uh, reflecting the priorities in, um, in EU. Uh, some think that this is uh, extremely complicated. Some think that we lack the necessary information to really put this into use. I think that the right way to look at it is that we are starting in uh, January 2022 and every month we will build information. So in 12 months we will have significantly more information uh, and we will we'll be much more targeted. Uh, in three years uh, we will have a system that works pretty well uh, and we will have databases that we will use and we can lift information into our models, into our decision making, uh, making processes. So I think that it's, it's a smart thing to dig into this, try to understand it, uh, but uh, use it with the necessary care. The EU taxonomy is built like a three-stage uh, rocket with uh, um, based on the six uh, environmental uh, targets that EU has defined. The first two is put, being put into practice from the 1st of January 2022. Uh, the last four uh, will be put into practice uh, uh, one year later. So it's climate change mitigation, uh, climate change adaptation, uh, sustainable use and protection of water and marine resources, transition to a circular economy, our theme today, pollution prevention and control, and the protection and restoration of biodiversity and ecosystems. So that's the platform. And then the three-stage rocket is point number one, uh, to be defined as green, you have to have a substantial positive contribution to at least one of these six environmental objectives. And point number two, uh, you, should not, uh, you should do no significant harm to any of the other five. Uh, and then the third has to do with social si safeguards, uh, well-functioning labor markets, uh, based on OECD guidelines and the uh, international LO. Uh, but as a consequence, the definition of su substantial contribution and the definition of uh, no significant harm is important. And let's look at just one example. Uh, this has to do with the taxonomy criteria for construction and real estate activities, climate change uh, mitigation, and 7-1 construction of new buildings. As you see, it's very precise uh, what kind of uh, levels we should meet to be able to define ourselves as, uh, as green. And this is probably the part of the taxonomy in the real estate sector that has uh, received the most focus so, so far. But it's not necessarily the most important when it comes to our discussion about the circular uh, economy because the do no significant harm um, element uh, has, has very clear definitions of what we should do and what we should not do. And for instance, if you look at the same uh, construction of new buildings, uh, <coughs> the transition to a circular economy, at least 70% of the non-hazard uh, uh, construction and demolition waste generated on the construction site is prepared for reuse, recycling, and other material recovery, including backfilling operations. 70%. Uh, currently in Norway, we are at 40%. Um, so we have a long stretch to go to be able to meet this, this criteria. Uh, very, very important. Uh, and also, uh, this spring, the spring 2022, um, uh, e the EU expert panel is currently reviewing um, the substantial contribution uh, objective when it comes to circular economy. So it will be defined in EU this spring and it will come into ha EU hard law from the 1st of January 2022. So um, if, you, if, you, if you go back, there are three key drivers behind the changes in uh, uh, funding streams in the market. Uh, it has to do with the understanding of climate risk, it has to do with customer preferences, but it also has to do with regulation. And the EU regulation that we are all subject to uh, have very clear definitions when it comes to um, uh, circular economy. As I said, the, the consequences of the taxonomy is still unknown. It's yet to be seen in, in practice. Uh, but one of the targets, one of the objectives with this regulation is to uh, 
uh, reorient capital flows towards sustainable investments. And what we do see in the market uh, so far is that it works. Um, I have still not met any uh, major investor saying that we have de decided not to dig into this and, and build it into our processes. Everybody is doing it, both when it comes to banks and when it comes to investors. So it will have an impact on share price and cost of, uh, cost of debt. Uh, and it has to do with the way we view risk. Because if you as a company um, decide not to follow this, uh, we believe uh, that our capital requirements will depend on how uh, the proportion of our business that is linked to green activities and non-green activities. And we will be penalized if the proportion of non-green activities is too high. So for the banks, we will have to report on this from 2022, and it will have an, an, um, an impact. Uh, then I, uh, I would like to just add one thing when it comes to circular economy uh, seen from the financial services sector. Uh, because one thing is uh, regulation, capital requirements, and the understanding and the definitions of what is green and uh, uh, green activities. But what we see is also that uh, a number of our member companies, they are taking their own initiatives, independent from, uh, from regulation. And I'd like to share one example that you will be able to dig deeper into to, tomorrow, uh, and that has to do with the insurance sector. And this example is from uh, Fremtin, uh, one of the major insurance companies that will visit you here tomorrow. <coughs> they have said uh, that, I mean, on, on total, the insurance companies, they are buying stuff for about 60 billion Norwegian kroner every year. Um, and when they uh, looked at it, uh, they saw that the level of repair uh, in, uh, in the claims handling was very, very low. Uh, and then as a test, they said, what if we set a target that we should repair a significant portion uh, of the damaged goods that we receive? And I mean, the, the results are, uh, are startling. The first example is repair of mobile phones. Fremtin, as, as one player, uh, they receive around 50,000 uh, damaged mobile phones a year. Uh, and then they said that um, uh, let's have an, uh, a very hairy goal, that we will repair 80% of this, uh, and that the, the remaining 20% is lost in the ocean or, I mean, uh, damaged beyond, beyond repair. And in one year, they have been able to reach uh, an, an, a, a target of 75% in one year, reducing emissions, reducing cost, uh, and moving significantly in the direction of a, a circular economy in this important area. And it sends a very strong signal uh, to all the players in the market. The other example has to do with uh, repairing cars. 312,000 cars uh, were uh, repaired in Norway last year. 2.5% uh, used uh, second-hand uh, parts for the car repair, uh, and the potential is significant. So it's a target of 10% in three years, and uh, they're on the way to, to meet this objective. I think to, to, to finalize this, uh, the circular economy, the m transfer from a linear economy to a circular economy is one of the two major shifts that we need to successfully uh, meet uh, uh, to get to a sustainable future. The financial services is an important part of this. Uh, regulation is driving uh, the change, uh, and it's a one-way road. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking forward to a discussion with you, Leo, on this. Thank you.